Okay, girls, before you work on the video project that you'll be creating, we do have to finish up the notes for the chapter, and I have lots going on with all the groups today, so I'm going to have you watch the video and take the notes that I present. So you will need to open up your notes on the screen and drag and drop the video next to it so you can follow along. Okay, so here is where we left off the other day. We're still talking about the Windows Task Manager and we're talking about it in versions uh, 7 and earlier of Windows. And under the Processes tab, the last thing we had from the other day was that when you are looking at the processes listed, you can right click and you can choose create dump file, which really isn't uh, helpful to you unless you are on the phone with technical support for a software program and they want you to do that so they can try to debug it. Other than that, you leave it alone. Okay. If you take a look on the screen, you'll see the uh, several asterisks that I have. So that just identifies the barrier between the other day and today. So I'm going to move on. And these are some of the other things that you do in the Processes tab. What I have listed first for today is you can also right-click on a process and choose Set Priority. And I'm pretty sure we learned this before this year. This is where you can decide how much CPU time you want to devote for a process. So if you have something that's not completing on your computer like you'd like it to, you can devote more CPU time to it and that will speed up the process. You can also right click and choose something similar. Um, it's set affinity and set affinity lets you decide how, which and how many CPU cores you want a process to take. So you can, by doing that, you can uh, give a process more power behind it of the processor, or you can take power away from it, depending on what you're trying to do. And then the last thing, I believe this is the last thing, is you can also right click and you can choose end process tree. So instead of just killing the process itself, it's going to kill that and everything else that depends on it. Okay, now I'm going to move on. And I'm not going to say too much on the next few ones, but uh, in the task manager, there's also the services tab. And that'll show you um, the current computer services that are running or not necessarily that are running, but are just in, on the computer. And so what you can do is you can stop or start the services by just right clicking on them and choosing from the option. But it really is recommended if you're doing things with services to instead of using the tab in the Windows Task Manager to use the services applet that's in the control panel. Um, you can get to this by just typing services.msc in the search box of the uh, window screen. And now I'm going to move on to the next one, which is the performance tab. And the performance tab is uh, really helpful when you need to troubleshoot things. It will show you what the CPU and RAM resources are. And you can see which programs or which things on the computer are taking up uh, the most resources. So if your computer's running slowly, you can kind of troubleshoot and see what it is that's hogging up all the resources. Okay, um, the next one are actually two, but the book combines them into or combines them into one. There is a tab called networking. There is another tab called users. They're very similar. What they will do is they'll show you which user accounts are logged in. And if you have the administrative privileges to do so, you can actually log other people off the system. And then what I'm going to be doing right now is jumping into the Windows 8 or 8.1 or Windows 10 version of the task manager because it is, uh, there are some similarities, but there are also some uh, pretty big differences. So I'm only going to include the tabs that um, are additional in the newer versions of Windows. And one of the things that's different uh, just in general about the task manager is you do have the capability of having a, having a view of fewer details. So it's a much more simple interface. Uh, if you really need to see all the techie stuff though, you would want to choose more details. And that should be the default when you first get into the task manager. It should come up to the more details tab. 
or with a more details view, excuse me. Um, what's going to be missing from the task manager is the applications tab that we see in Windows 7 and earlier. So everything that used to be under the applications tab, you will find under the processes tab instead. It also does not have a networking tab. So everything that you used to find under the networking tab, you find under the performance tab. Oh, it looks like I spelled performance wrong. Let me fix that. Okay, so we have that. Now, here's a new tab that comes up in the task manager, and that is app history. And what this will do is instead of just showing you things that are running right now, it will show you things that were recently running and it collects the statistics on it. So I have here listed, whoops, 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 I went too far. I have here listed, it collects recent stats on CPU or network usage, not just running processes. So it can be helpful when you're looking back at uh, a little period of time. Okay instead of just now. All right, so there's another tab that is added to the task manager, and this is the startup tab. And what you'll find under here is everything that used to be in the MS config utility of Windows 7 and previously, previous versions. This is where you can pick and choose what programs you want to start up with your computer. And that's uh, very helpful, especially if your computer's acting up. If you think you may have a virus or some sort of malware, go under the startup tab and look for some unfamiliar, suspicious programs, possibly. All right. And there is also a tab, which is details. And what the details tab in the task manager is, is it just includes the information that used to be under the processes tab in earlier versions of the task manager, older versions of Windows. Uh, really quickly, I just want to show this to you. So I'm going to pull up the task manager. And to get to the task manager, remember, you can just press alt Control delete That's the easiest way. And this is the Windows 10 version right here. So we have the Processes tab. It'll show you everything that's running. If I'm having an issue with something, okay, for example, this Adobe Acrobat service update or update service. Maybe I want to close out of that, I can choose end task. If I'm on the phone with Adobe having problems, maybe they want to see what the information is and they want me to create a dump file. Um, in this case, I'm going to choose end task though and close out of that. Performance tab, this is where you're going to see what's going on with your CPU, what's going on with your memory, what's going on with your hard drive. If you have multiple hard drives, they'd be listed as well. Um, what's going on with your Ethernet if you were connected, which I'm not. I always use Wi-Fi with this computer. And then it'll show you your activity with your Wi-Fi. So it's really good for seeing what's going on. Here is the App History tab. And again, it's not just showing programs that are running right now. It is showing the resource usage from October, or excuse me, October, January 31st until now. So you can go in and, and check some of this out if you want to. Um, the startup tab, here's where you can decide what starts up with your computer or not. So if this Adobe Acrobat Speed Launcher, if I wanna turn that off, I just can choose disable. It's not gonna remove it from the computer, but it will prevent it from starting up with the computer. Users tab, not much to see here because this is a single user computer, but if there were multiple, you would see more. And the details tab, this is everything that used to be under the processes tab in the old version. You can see um, some detailed information about things running in the background. And then the last one here, the services tab. So you can see some different things if you want to turn things off. For example, this process or the service at the top, why search util service? This is Yahoo. So not anything that I want. I have it stopped. If it was running, I could just right click and choose stop. If I want to run it, I can right click and choose start. So this is where you can do some things with that. And that's all with the task manager. Okay, so now we've learned about the task manager and we're going to just move on to a few more things. I am leaving some stuff out that was in the chapter itself that I don't think is very relevant or important right now. So let me move on here to task list, task kill, these are some specific commands that you can run in Windows when you um, are having some problems with uh, running programs or processes. So what you can do, they are command prompt uh, commands. So 
uh, you would run it from the DOS prompt task list. What this will do is it will produce a list of all running processes on the computer and it'll set it up in a column style format. Task kill is what you use when you are trying to stop a process that's currently running. Um, you can add when you're doing this what we call a switch and it's a forward slash F. We can put that after the command and what that would do is force it to close. I'll try to uh, get this to run for you here. So let me go to my command prompt. I always like to run it as an administrator. So I just type CMD in the search box and I'm gonna right click and choose run as administrator. First thing I'm gonna do is try a task list command. Okay, my task list is really long, but I can scroll through. You probably can't see it very well in the video, but there are many different things running here. I'm gonna try to pick one and see if I can cause it to uh, stop. Okay, I have one here that's mbamtray.exe. That's a malware bytes, anti-malware. So I'm gonna try to get rid of that. So I'm gonna do task kill space and then mba m tray dot exe because remember this is just going to show me my executable files and I am going to add uh, forward slash f as a switch which again forces it to close if I leave that off it will try to close but uh, this will ensure that if I did this correctly I haven't used task kill in a long time so let's see if I did it right no I did not Invalid argument option, M bam tray. Okay, I'm gonna try this one more time. And I'm gonna try it without the EXE at the end and see if that'll work. Oh, I spelled task kill wrong. Oh, Mrs. Rivera can't do anything right here. M B A M tray. Let me see if I got it. Nope. Let me just double check here. Look for a little help with this one. No, I still can't do this because I can't even type the word task kill. Come on, Mrs. Rivera. Sorry, girls. There we go. Task kill. All right, I'm gonna try this one more time. So I'm gonna go task, looks like I did it in the wrong order. Task kill forward slash F, M, B, oops, B, A, M, can type, tray, dot, E, X, E. Okay, I'm giving up on this, but uh, theoretically you know what it should do, right? That was just a big fail. Okay, I'm going to go back to my notes. And uh, this will be the last thing for the chapter, and that's Performance Monitor. Uh, if you have an older version of Windows, back like in Windows Vista, they used to call it the Reliability and Performance Monitor. It is the same thing. The way to get to it, if you just, just start typing P-E-R-F-M-O-N for Performance Monitor .msc in your search box, you can launch it. And the purpose of it is it's really good to help troubleshoot programs that are hogging up your memory, your CPU, any other resources on your computer. So I'm going to pull that up for just a second. Look, I only had to type the first few letters and there it is, performance monitor. And there's the performance monitor, it comes up on the screen. And it'll give you some infer general information at the top. And then you can scroll through and check out some different things. If I click on Performance Monitor on the left-hand side in the navigation panel, and then I get a little more specific information as well. In this case, it's uh, showing the processor. And that's it for Chapter 13. It's time for you to make a lovely, lovely video. So please make sure you have your notes saved and we'll move on to the next thing.